In my 10 years of teaching math, I've come to the conclusion that students find trinomial factoring kind of difficult, especially when the value of a does not equal 1. There's just so many different ways to do it, each feeling more complicated than the next. Fortunately, I have a seriously epic top secret factoring strategy that thousands of my students will tell you is a total game changer when it comes to factoring trinomials. But first, do me a favor and trinomial factor that like button so that lots of other people can discover this epic strategy as well. Let's get into what the strategy is and how to use it by looking at a few examples. All right, so let's start by taking a look at this trinomial right here. And you can see right away that I'm working with a trinomial that does not have an a value that is equal to one. Okay, the number in front of x squared is not one. That's gonna tell us that we can use this crazy strategy. Now, before we get into it though, most trinomial factoring strategies start by looking at the B value and finding two numbers that add to get that B value. In this case, that's five. But we also need two numbers that are gonna multiply to get us this A value times this C value at the end here. So that's gonna be six. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get six while also adding to get five. And like I said, most factoring strategies, regardless of which one you're using, are gonna use something similar to this. And so this is usually the hardest part of factoring for people is coming up with these two numbers. And one of the things I like to do to make it simpler is I like to start with the multiplication first. And so what I do is I just try two numbers that I know multiply to get six. Let's just pick on six and one first. I know that six times one is gonna give me six, but six and one will never add to get me five, right? So I can throw those numbers in the garbage. And that's sort of what you do is you just kind of pick on numbers until you can get rid of them. And whatever's left, you know, eventually you're gonna come up with the right numbers. So I know that three and two also will multiply to give me six and three and two are also going to add to give me five, right? So I'm gonna say three times two is equal to six and three plus two is equal to five. So three and two are two numbers that are gonna satisfy those conditions, adding to get five while also multiplying to get six, okay? Once you come up with those two numbers, this is where the real fun and really crazy strategy is gonna start. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those two numbers, three and two, and we're just gonna write them anywhere on your page. It doesn't really matter where you write them. I like to kind of write them just below the trinomial to keep things organized. And what you're gonna do is just sort of randomly divide them by the value of A. And in this case, the value of A is six. And I say randomly because it doesn't seem to make any sense why you're doing this, but I promise this is gonna work and it's gonna be a lot simpler than anything else you've done before when it comes to trinomial factoring. And so what we're gonna do is take those fractions that we created and we're gonna reduce them to lowest terms. So we know that three over six, that's just the same thing as a half. And we know that two over six, that's just the same thing as one third. Okay, so we ended up with two simpler fractions reduced to lowest terms. Now here's where the really crazy part starts. You're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna simply smack those fractions from left to right, okay? Take your left hand and just sort of imagine like tipping the numerator over to the right side of the denominator. Now let me show you what that looks like. We're gonna end up with the denominator of two and next to it to the right, we have our numerator of one. And since it's a positive one, let's call it positive one. That's important and you'll see why in a minute. And we're gonna do the same thing for our second fraction. We're gonna have our denominator of three and next to it, we're gonna have our numerator of positive one. Now what you've done is you've just created two random pairs of numbers that don't seem to really mean anything. So what we're gonna do is put some brackets around those random pairs of numbers and we're gonna stick an X next to the first number. And what you're gonna see is that you ended up with factored form. It's a super random strategy and you're probably thinking there's no way that worked. But fortunately, there's a way you can test this just simply by multiplying 2x times 3x and so on until you end up with the original trinomial back again. And so I've just done that for you to save you some time, but you can see that this does in fact result in the original trinomial. And I promise this will work every time. Like any new concept or strategy, it is important to practice. So to help you out with this, I've linked a free worksheet in the description below so that you can practice this crazy strategy. I've also included full solutions and links to video solutions for each problem so that you can master this strategy. All right, let's take a look at another one. So looking at this example, you can see again that we're dealing with a trinomial that has an A value that's not one. That tells us we can use this crazy strategy. So we're gonna start again by looking at two numbers that add to get our B term. And in this case, our B term is gonna be negative one. Remember, there's a little imaginary one there, even though we don't write it. And we wanna find two numbers that are gonna multiply to give us A times C. In this case, that's gonna be negative 30. Okay, so a little bit more difficult in this problem because we're dealing with negatives, but that's okay. You'll remember that I said, I like to start with the multiplication first. And you can choose two numbers like, you know, 30 and one, but there's no way, no matter what you do to those numbers, they're not gonna add to get negative one. So we can throw those out and let's pick two numbers that are a little closer together. Something like, you know, six and five. If I multiply six times five, I know I'm gonna get 30, but I wanna get negative 30. So one of those numbers is gonna have to be negative, okay? 
And here's the thinking I use to decide which one. I, I just kind of do a little bit of guessing and checking. If I make the five negative, I will get negative 30. But when I add six and negative five, I don't get negative one, I get positive one. So that tells me that I have to make my six negative so that when I add those two numbers together, I will get negative one, right? So negative six times five is gonna give me negative 30 and negative six plus five is going to give me negative one. Okay, so my two numbers that I wanna work with in this problem are gonna be negative six and five. Okay, so remember with this strategy, we're gonna take those two numbers that we found, negative six and five, and just sort of write them on your page wherever you have space, right? I'm just gonna put them underneath the trinomial and I'm gonna randomly divide them by the value of A, which in this case is two. And remember, we wanna simplify our fractions by reducing to lowest terms. Negative six over two, that's just negative three. But I'm gonna write a one on the bottom because I need a denominator for this trick. And five over two, that's already reduced to lowest terms. Okay, so you remember, I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna slap the fraction from left to right. Numerator is gonna fall next to the denominator. And you'll see in this case that I have a negative three. I'm gonna bring that negative with me. That's really important here. The sign is super important. And we're gonna do the same thing for the second fraction. We're gonna tip it over from left to right. We're gonna have the denominator of two and next to it, we're gonna have that positive five. Okay, I'm gonna keep that sign because that is important. And the last thing we're gonna do is just slap some brackets around these pairs of numbers so that we can start making some sort of factored form expression here. Okay, remember, last thing is just putting an X next to the first number in each set of brackets, and you will end up with a factored form expression for this trinomial. And again, if you don't believe me, you can check your answer by multiplying 1X times 2X and so on until you get that original trinomial back again. And I promise this will work every time. All right, now that you've learned some new mathematical sorcery, you're gonna wanna grab that worksheet in the description below and head over to this video right here for some more practice. And I will see you there.